Hey guys, so I have uh, a fun video for you today and it is a very special video because I am doing it in collaboration with Hannah over at Smoky Glow. Hannah, thank you so much for collaborating with me. Let me just say that first and foremost. You are so amazing. So amazing. Your channel is amazing. And I just want to congratulate Hannah on hitting 100. I don't even know where she's going to be at this point, but she hit 100,000 subscribers in like record time. Her channel has just completely blown up and it's no surprise. I've been following her since she, I don't know, maybe had like just less than 10,000 subscribers. And I was introduced to her, I believe through Georgia Harris and Lacey over at Spooky Hips and Fat Lips. Spooky, Spooky Lips and Fat Hips? Oh my God. Spooky Lips and Fat Hips. <laughs> always like switch it around. I'm always like spooky hips and fat lips. No, that's not right. Spooky lips and fat hips. Anyway, um, I think I was introduced to her through them. And ever since then, I have watched every single one of her videos. Every time a video of hers pops up in my subscription feed, I hit it immediately. I consider her a, a beauty channel, but she does a lot of commentary as well. She covers a lot of drama that's going on in the YouTube sphere. Uh, and I watch all of it because I don't, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I don't know who most of the people are that she's talking about, but she'll give me just enough backstory so that I can kind of follow along. And you know, I'm, I'm here on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel. I do YouTube full time now. And while I don't feel like I need to know all the ins and outs of every single thing that's going on, I think it's nice to know like what is happening. And Hannah gives that to me. She gives me like the lowdown and I so appreciate her perspective on things. And I hope this doesn't come off I don't know, condescending or patronizing in any way. But because Hannah is much younger than I am, I'm 46, she's like in her early 20s. She could be my daughter, basically. I don't have children. So I feel like I watch her for like that generation's viewpoint on things because I don't, because I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know. I'm like, oh, okay, that's okay. Like that, that's how, that's how kids think of it. Okay, okay, I get it. Like she's become my own personal voice <laughs> for that generation. So not only does she talk about, you know, what's going on on YouTube, what's going on in the beauty community, but she, you know, is a beauty channel. So she used to have, I think they were called like Tutorial Tuesdays, uh, but now they're Talktorial Tuesdays or just Talktorials, uh, where she just kind of goes, you know, and does like a makeup look with uh, an eyeshadow palette or whatever, but it's super chill. You know, it's not this like really in-depth tutorial with techniques or whatever, which definitely have its place, but hers are just so much more chill and she'll just be talking about whatever it is. Sometimes it's drama. Sometimes it's what's going on in her life. Sometimes it's how she's feeling at that moment. Sometimes it is just all about the makeup and it's, it's great. And I think one of my all time favorite videos from Hannah is um, her Bratz doll attempt. <laughs> it is so funny. I'll have a clip of it here, but I was crying so hard by the end of this video. I was laughing so hard. I, I probably have played that video back like at least four or five times. I know I've put it on when I was kind of in a poopy mood and I was like, oh, I need something to cheer me up. And I was like, I'm going to put on that video. And sure enough, it cheered me up. <laughs> Of course, I had to watch the video again. Oh my god, I'm crying. Oh, you guys have to watch it. The lips. So one last thing about Hannah before we move into the video is she is a knitter. Oh my god. When I realized she was a knitter, I was like, oh, no wonder. <laughs> no wonder I love her. So anyway, what Hannah and I are collabing on are our 10 worst luxury beauty products. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. We did not discuss our lists beforehand, before filming. So if there are any duplicates on here, you know they're horrible. But definitely head on over to Smoky Glow's channel if you want 10 more horrible products from this past year. So let's go ahead and dive into my list right now. And I'm going to start off with something that I hauled and just haven't mentioned because I just, I haven't, I haven't really been able to figure out what to say about this product. And I think I finally know what to say. They've been sitting in my shower for so long. They're so dirty. I was going to wipe these clean to show you, but I'm like, why bother? I'm just going to throw them out after I show them to you. So this was the Charlotte Tilbury Cleansing Ritual 1 and 2. This was a set. You wash your face with this and then you wash it again <laughs> with this. These do absolutely nothing. I mean, the only saving grace to these is that they didn't bother my skin. So it's not like I broke out or got a rash or 
just had a terrible reaction to them. Nothing like that happened, but like absolutely nothing else happened. My skin didn't actually feel clean afterwards. I remember I tried cleaning makeup off with these. It removed maybe like, I don't I want to say maybe half of my makeup. So it's just been sitting in my shower and I'll like just kind of like grudgingly use them. I'm like, Ugh, I have this cleanser. Let me just use it. And I'll just use like step one. It doesn't even, it like, I don't, it just doesn't do anything. It doesn't feel like anything on the skin. It's just not, it's nothing. <laughs> it's nothing. It doesn't, it just doesn't do anything. So this is my first worst product of 2019. Just, and it's two steps, it's two steps of nothing. Okay, my next worst product of 2019, I don't even have, I returned, um, are the Pat McGrath loose powders. So she came out with the foundation, the loose powder, and a brush and a primer. The powder, I didn't like the primer either, but the powder out of all of those things, I didn't actually try the brush, but the powder out of the primer, the foundation, and the powder was the worst. I thought it was terrible. The packaging was terrible. Um, and what it did to my skin, I was actually pretty shocked. I, I love Pat McGrath. You guys know I love Pat McGrath. I love like 95% of her products, but the powder was so bad. It made my skin look dry and quickly. It wasn't like I applied too much, which happens with a lot of powders. You just go in heavy with a powder and you're gonna look cakey, you're gonna look dry, your lines are gonna be emphasized. It just took a little bit of this powder to do that. And I was, I was shocked, honestly. I was really, really shocked because, you know, I expect a lot from Pat McGrath. Her products are so, so good. You guys know how much I love her eyeshadows, her lip products. They're all amazing. So I was really surprised at this powder. And then the packaging was so awful. I think I talked about this during like another kind of like bad products video, but like the packaging, it has this netting on top and like the powder's already coming out of it. The whole thing, it just, it wasn't big enough. It needed to be in a bigger container. And so when you got it, there was just powder everywhere. By the time you like open the seal up, it was everywhere. So I was so, so disappointed in that powder. I was so looking forward to a powder from Pat McGrath and it just, Oh my God, it let me down. It let me down horribly. So that was definitely one of my big, big fails from 2019. The next product I wanna mention is another Pat McGrath product, but you know what? It sucks, so I have to talk about it, but this is her Chroma Lux Highlight Creams. I wanted to return these and I kinda of missed the date. So I still have them, unfortunately. These are terrible. Let's talk about the packaging first. So these come in these little like metal tubes okay it has the cute printing on it or whatever it has that kind of like retro apothecary kind of vibe to it so i get kind of like what they were trying to do but i personally cannot stand this packaging because product just keeps coming out it just keeps coming out you don't even have to squeeze it there's generally like a giant air bubble in there that's just pushing everything out as soon as you like unscrew the top so there's that so the packaging sucks it looks like ointment and unfortunately that's the least of its worst qualities the actual product i think is terrible so it's this like cream kind of like highlight it's this kind of like weird like frosting like highlight so here is the texture of it and the problem is it's almost like it's too thick for what it needs to be so it doesn't blend out easily and then it's just a micro glitter hell like if you put just a little bit on your cheek you're just gonna get like a fallout of micro glitter all throughout the day and when you try and get just like like a sheer application of it it's patchy like you can't just get like a really nice smooth even like thin application of it where you just want like just like a nice kind of like sheer finish of this no it gets really really patchy you have to put a lot on like this to get it to look kind of even. And then, you know, I get that Pat McGrath is very editorial, but this is like, what am I gonna, like, what am I gonna do with this? What am I gonna do with this? So for me, it just did not work out. I just found it patchy. I didn't like the texture. The packaging sucks. And it's just this micro glitter bomb. And now that I've swatched this on the back of my hand, I'm going to have micro glitters on the back of my hand for at least a couple weeks at least a couple weeks so another fail this year from pat mcgrath number four on my list is probably the most recent uh fail i'm going to talk about and i just did a whole video on this eyeshadow quad you guessed it the tom ford 
extreme badass eyeshadow quad. So I got a lot of comments from people when I made this video that it did not work for them either, but I probably got the same amount of comments saying like, oh, it actually worked fine for me. I, I really like this quad. Well, it didn't, it definitely didn't. I'm in the camp where it did not work. This did not work. This purple color is so poor. I mean, look how patchy that is. And look at that, look at that swatch. What is even happening? It just blends away and it's barely purple. It just comes off, it comes off gray on my eyelids and it just blends away. And I feel like every time I tried to build it up, it would just blend away. I just couldn't get the pigmentation that I wanted. It's just sad. It was absolutely sad. And yeah, like these other colors are nice, but they're nothing special. I mean, when you look at this palette, your eye goes directly to the purple. You want that purple to work. Like if this champagne color is a little sad, which it is actually, it's not even like the best champagne color I've used. Definitely not from Tom Ford. Like it's okay, but you know, I just, maybe it's my expectations. I don't know, but you know, they're calling this an extreme eyeshadow quad. This is part of the Tom Ford extreme line, which has been pretty much a fail for me. I did not like the extreme single shadows which I roasted in another video, but I don't think those came out this year, so I, I'm not talking about them. They have extreme, I think, lip lacquers. I got one color slicker in that lip lacquer, and it, I mean, it wasn't just drying. It wasn't just drying. It dried up on my lips and actually started to flake off, like old paint. It was absolutely awful, absolutely awful. This, unfortunately, is really no different. It's just, not good. The performance is really, really poor, especially compared to other Tom Ford quads, of which I have many, and I love them all. This one is just awful, absolutely awful. I don't think I've ever been this disappointed in a Tom Ford quad. It's just not good. It's not good. So the next fail on my list, one of the worst products I think of 2019, are the Tom Ford Emotion Proof eyeshadows. Tom Ford released this whole Emotion Proof line. They have these potted eyeshadows, uh, some eyeliners, I think a mascara, and they're supposed to be quote unquote Emotion Proof. Aside, from, that name is terrible. I think it's so, so awful, but it's kind of obvious like what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to, I guess, be waterproof and not budge. Because I get Melia on my, around my eyes very, very easily, I was very curious about the ingredients and I had a very bad experience with MAC paint pots. So those are potted eyeshadows that, I don't know, for some reason just reminded me of these Tom Ford Emotion Proof eyeshadows. I hadn't even received them, you know, in person, but I saw them online and I thought, you know what, I just, let me just check, let me just check. So when I got the Emotion Proof eyeshadows in person, I checked the ingredients of the Tom Ford ones against the MAC paint pots. And what I came to find was that the ingredients were like 99% the same. And I was disappointed because the MAC paint pots give me Melia, and therefore I thought I shouldn't use these Tom Ford ones. They're just gonna give me Melia. they're just gonna clog up my pores, they're just gonna like jack up my eyelids. I, I'm, I shouldn't use them. But really what's so disappointing is that Estee Lauder decided to pretty much double the price of these eyeshadows, package them up with the Tom Ford label and try and sell those to us. Business is business. I'm not canceling Tom Ford. I'm not canceling Estee Lauder, all that stuff. I just think it was incredibly poor form to do that because they could have come out with a very similar formula from Tom Ford, something very, very similar because what they could have done, I mean, with all the resources that Estee Lauder has, they could have come up with a similar formula. They could have used the paint pot as a starting point and then, I don't know, like jazzed it up a little bit, updated it a little bit because the paint pots have been around for a really long time. Just done something a little bit different, but no, it was like they just tried to pass off the same exact thing under a different label and sell it to us. And I just, it was insulting. I found it very, very insulting. So that was definitely a worse product from 2019. Okay, number six. The Kevin Aquan Foundation Balm. No, mm -mm. that was just a flat out no. I was so excited for it. It just seemed like it was gonna be a product that was perfect for dry skin, which is what I have. It sounded like it was gonna be nourishing, that it was just gonna go on like smoothly. I mean, I felt like I was putting flesh colored shoe polish on my face. It was 
terrible. It looked so bad. I have since decluttered it. I will put a picture of my thumbnail up here because not only will you see that the shade was not quite right, which was weird because in the actual tub, the foundation looked too dark for me. I put it on my skin and it was way too light for me. So that was a little bit odd also, but the texture of it, it was so, so thick. And no matter how I tried it, that video was kind of like a first impressions. And then some people commented with some like application tips. I was like, okay, like I'll put on just like a little bit, but because it was so thick, if I put it on anywhere and try to blend it out, you could like see where like the blending stopped. So then it was like, I did end up having to kind of put it everywhere. And then I ended up with that same crazy, like mask like look, it was the worst texture. It looked terrible, even though it was kind of creamy and slimy, it looked so dry on my skin. I don't know. I feel like maybe I heard that it worked better on oily skin. I'm not exactly sure because of that consistency. I, I can't, it just seems like it would just melt off of your face. I don't know, but I thought it was really, really awful. It just, it wasn't good. It was, it did not, did not work for me at all. Speaking of shoe polish, this is one that I actually have not mentioned in a while, but this is the um, Anastasia Beverly Hills, their brow gel. Um, I have since decluttered this and I'll put a picture of it up here. I think they're, I think it's still out there. So obviously I'm in the minority because it, really did not work for me. So you guys know how much I love the Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel. This is my holy grail eyebrow product. It's what I have in my eyebrows right now. And it's great. You know, it has a wonderful consistency. It's a little bit on the drier side. And so when I brush it into my eyebrows, it just kind of coats my eyebrows and makes them a little bit thicker. I get a little bit of pigment there, fills in some bald spots, perfect. The Anastasia Brow Gel, it was so wet <laughs> that it looked like like I know you guys have seen like eyebrow tint. Um, I know they sell like boxed eyebrow tints for men and you like kind of paint it on and you look like you have it all over your eyebrows. And when you wash it off, you know, you've like dyed your eyebrows basically. You've darkened them a little bit, but it looks crazy when you have it on because it looks like you basically have that dye all around your eyebrows. That's what the Anastasia Beverly Hills brow gel looked like on me. It looked like I was dyeing my eyebrows. That's how wet and goopy and just like, I couldn't get it to look natural at all, no matter how little I used because it was just too wet. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I, could, I couldn't get it to work. It's still out on the market. I think I've heard some people say that they actually really like that product. I just can't even imagine because it looked like so insane on me. So unfortunately, I don't even have any photos or footage of that because I remember putting it on and then like, having to take it off immediately. It was like one motion, like on, off. And I tried it a couple ways and I was like, okay, maybe just too much product is on the brush. I like would actually just, not just scrape the brush off on the side of the tube, but like I would take like a wipe and actually like wipe some of it off and really try and use just the littlest bit. It just didn't, it didn't work. It just didn't work at all. It was just way, way too loose of a formula. So big no, big no for me. Okay, and I can't not make this video without talking about the Patrick Ta like glow spray can. Mm. Okay, so I just roasted this product in a, like a, a recent fails video. Uh, but for those of you who maybe have come over from um, Hannah's channel or <laughs> for any of you that maybe have missed it, I will go through the whole thing. So Patrick Ta, uh, as part of his first big release earlier this year, he came out with basically highlight in a spray can. I thought this would be a good idea. I don't know why. I don't know why I thought it was going to be a good idea, but I thought it was going to be a great idea. I really like Patrick Ta's work. I follow him on Instagram, all the pictures he posts of his models. They all look beautiful. They all look beautiful. So, and I ordered straight from his website. I don't even wait for it to come to, I ordered two, no, I ordered three of those spray cans. I think I can't even remember now because it's been a while. And then I ordered all of his lip glosses, which I love. And I even ordered the fan. Okay. So I was, I was deep in, I was invested. I wanted these to work. And I had seen some videos of people, you know, like putting the fan up to their face, spraying the highlight, and it was like this magical highlight moment. And so I do the same thing. I pull out the fan, I pull out the highlighter, I shake it up, cause it is, it's literally like spray paint. I shake it up 
and I'm thinking, okay. And then the doubt starts to kind of seep in because here I am with this fan and I'm like, okay, I'm a righty. So I'm like, okay, let me hold this with my left hand. And I'm like trying to figure out, okay, where exactly do I angle it? And as I'm about to spray, I'm like, oh God, my eye, my hair, like, you know, I start doing all of this and I'm like, well, maybe I need to put a headband in. And then I'm like, oh, but I guess I'll just close my eyes. No, it doesn't work. So I sprayed it like just really quickly like this didn't really show up. I did it again, like a little bit closer. And then it was kind of like every, it was kind of like everywhere. And then I was like, okay, well, I kind of need to block up here, but I don't want it all on my cheek. Whatever, whatever. It's impossible. Unless you have eight hands, it's literally impossible because you have to block this part. You have to block this part. You have to block your hair. And that's if you just want it here. And then it's kind of like impossible to hold it at the right distance for like the intensity that you want. And then you know, have you guys ever worked with spray paint? I've worked with spray paint. That first spot where you spray, there's always that big chunk and then the spray paint gets like less. So that's what happens. So you kind of have like a blob and then it fades. So you can start at one end <laughs> and go, but like you end up with like the blob. Anyway, I think you get my point. And I think that those are great for the body. They'd be great, you know, if you just kind of want to spray it over here, maybe spray it on your like shoulders or whatever. Be great for that. I don't do that. I don't, I, and I've come to this realization about myself over the past couple of years because I've purchased, you know, body oils with glitter in it. I've purchased like body, you know, those like leg smoothers. All I never use them. I try, I want to, I want to be that person. I do. I want to be that person, but I just don't. And I think that those spray cans are great for that. And I wish he had marketed that as like a body highlight because then I wouldn't have tried spraying it on my face and completely ruining my makeup. And maybe I would have been smart enough to just avoid those products. Oh, and then to add insult to injury. So I had these cans of highlighter that I knew I was never ever gonna use that I was kind of quietly hating and detesting and I had them sitting in a box and they were on their side. That's how they were shipped, they were on their side. And I come to like move that box or like just finally go and throw them away and they leak. They leak if they're not standing up. So they made a total mess. They like leaked through the box. It's awful, it was absolutely awful and there's barely any product in there. So when I picked up the like one can that had leaked the most, it was pretty much empty. I was like, Ugh. It's just so like so disappointing in every way so those glow sprays or whatever I, if you've been tempted i i wouldn't i wouldn't get them unless you want to use them on your body if you want to use them on your face i would stay far away okay next up is it's definitely a little bit random let me just tell you what happened so i went on to the nordstrom site uh maybe last week or a couple weeks ago i'm on the new arrivals i'm just curious if anything new has dropped and there was a new uh margiela replica perfume and it's called coffee break and my eyes lit up for those of you who maybe are new to my channel or don't know this i love coffee like like love coffee i love it i could live off of it I'm, I'm very specific about the beans that i like i have a fancy espresso machine downstairs like i love coffee so of course my eyes lit up i'm reading the description they're saying it smells like you know coffee with cream and that and blah. And I was like this close to just ordering it. I put it in my cart and I thought, maybe I should smell it first. So I find myself at the mall. I find myself at Nordstrom with my friend. And I remember, I'm like, oh my gosh, that new perfume. Let me go find it. I need to find it. I need to smell this. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I was so excited. I thought, oh my gosh, maybe I'm gonna find like my 2020 signature fragrance. I was so excited. I go over, they actually have it in store, because as you know, sometimes they have stuff online, it's not in store. They have it in store. I like beelined it to the perfume. My friend was with me and I pick it up. I see the tester and I'm like, yes. I spray it on myself, mistake number one. I spray it on myself and I'm like, hmm, well, that's weird. And I look at the bottle again. I make sure it says coffee break on it, smell it. Hmm, that's odd. So then I take one of those little card, stick cards or whatever that you spray the perfume on so you you know, smell. Spray it on that thing. Hmm, that's weird. I'm like, I don't smell any coffee. It just smells like alcohol, like the alcohol they use in perfume, not an alcohol. Like it didn't smell like whiskey or anything like that. It just smelled like alcohol, a little musky, no coffee. So I think maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. Maybe my nose is missing it for some reason. So I, I hand it over to my friend. I was like, I'm not going to tell you what this is going to smell like, what it's supposed to smell like. I'm just spray it. You tell me. She said, okay. She sniffs it and she's like, 
just kind of smells like alcohol. <laughs> and I'm like, nothing else? Mm, no. She's like, it really just smells like alcohol. I'm like, this is supposed to smell like coffee. And she was like, coffee. We were both so confused. It didn't smell like coffee at all. Zero at all. I am really confused. I happen to like Margiela fragrances. Not all of them are for me, but I like them. You know, I read the label, I read the description, I smell and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I get it. This, like, not even close. And I don't know if any of you out there jumped at the opportunity to buy it and got it online. And if you did and you got it home, please let me know what you think of it down below in the comment section. I'm so curious. I'm like, maybe the tester they had out was just wrong because it was so wrong. It was so wrong. It didn't smell like coffee at all. Okay, and last but not least, you guys know I couldn't, I couldn't not mention this product in this video, but this was also something that appeared in a recent fails video. And this is just bad. This is the Chanel uh, bronzer and highlight duo. And this guy, this little guy, this poor guy over here, I'm so sorry, it's not your fault. I know it's not your fault, but this is supposed to be a bronzer. This, this side supposed to be a bronzer. Most of you agree with me and I feel awful because there was someone in my recent fails video that commented and she was like, well, I guess <laughs> I'm the only person that it works for because it actually, she's like, I'm so fair. It actually works as a bronzer for me. And I was like, I'm so happy for you. I'm so glad that this works for someone. But she was the only person that has commented on the multiple videos I've made about how confusing I find this product to be because it's actually not a bad product. Like the actual formula of it is fine. It's like kind of a, a pretty creamy uh, like powder. It's a baked powder. It's on the creamier side. It, it's, it's actually lovely. But I have tried using this stupid bronzer as a bronzer, as a blush, as powder, setting powder under my eyes, just on my face, finishing powder, like every which way that I would use a powder that is this shade, this color, it just doesn't work. And I think calling this a bronzer is just simply a falsehood. It's just not a bronzer. And I don't know if I feel especially salty about this particular product because I was the idiot that bought it because the pictures of this online, very accurate. They look just like this. And I told myself that they must be wrong. I told myself that Chanel must know what they're doing if they're gonna call this a bronzer. It must deepen up on the face. The pictures must be blown out. It'll totally work. And I went ahead and I purchased this anyway. And I went ahead and I held on to this anyway. It's been a lovely source of entertainment for me ever since then, but this is, but this is not a bronzer. So this rounds out my worst products of 2019. So definitely head on over to Smokey Glow's channel if you are interested in more awful products from 2019. Thank you so, so much for watching. Please let me know what some of your um, fails were from this past year so I know to steer clear of them. And subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.